The Republic of Indonesia, a country made up of more than 17,500 separate islands in Southeast Asia. A diverse and dangerous place of active volcanoes, dense rainforests, tigers, poisonous snakes and rhinos. But there may be something else hiding here. A creature that locals have reported for centuries and scientists are only now examining. Said to be half man, half ape, mostly referred to as Orang Pendek, which in Indonesian means short person. I turned to the guide and said, you know, what is this? And, and his hand was shaking like this. He said, I don't, I don't know. Hair covered his entire body as I could see it. It was a very pretty color. Um, sort of tawny gold color. The last time when we were here, we saw it turn over a log, yeah? And, and eat the bugs underneath it. Described as about three feet tall, reddish in color, with a slender orangutan-like body, the orang pendek is always seen walking on two feet with an erect posture and most disturbing, it has a human-looking face, a description that fits a real being. In 2004, scientists revealed that they had found partial skeletons of a very small species of human that grew no larger than a three-year-old child of average height. Named Homo floresiensis, or Flores Man, after the Indonesian island where it was found, it became known as the real hobbit, after the tiny creatures from the movie Lord of the Rings. Flores Man may have been small, but he was also formidable. Stone tools and fossilized remains of elephants and Komodo dragons were also found at the dig site, suggesting Flores was a skilled hunter. While these fossils are believed to be about 18,000 years old, experts believe that the Flores man likely lived alongside humans until about 13,000 years ago, before dying out. The question is, is there a link between Flores man, the real hobbit, and recent sightings of the Orang Pendek? The possibility certainly exists and, and, and should be considered that Orang Pendek and Homo floresiensis are one and the same. Jeff Meldrum is a paleoanthropologist at Idaho State University. Homo floresiensis may lie at the root of the stories of the small people of the forest, the Orang Pendek. Maybe this is a, a different species altogether. But where is the evidence? This monster quest expedition travels to the island of Sumatra, only 1,400 miles from Flores, where the Homo floresiensis fossils were discovered, and where locals claim to still see the Orang Pendek. Two veteran Orang Pendek researchers will lead a search into a remote jungle. It is here that they will deploy an array of high-tech camera systems, pheromone chips, and professional trackers. Go down the bank here for footprints. However, everybody here is aware of the story. There's nothing else that could be mistaken for. That's why, that's why it's so interesting. That's why I keep coming back. A decade before the Flores man's skeleton was found, another researcher was investigating the Orang Pendek. I knew the National Park rather well. I'd been here since 1994. Debbie Martyr, a former journalist, was one of the first to examine the mystery. It started off looking, uh, trying to validate an animal that was here, an animal called Orang Pendek. In 1994, in the Karinchi National Park in Sumatra, Debbie Martyr claims she spotted the Orang Pendek. I saw a bipedal primate, which was moving very bipedally. Martyr, who was carrying a camera, never got a photograph. Once the animal had gone and once I'd stopped swearing quite dreadfully because I hadn't taken a photograph, bang went the front cover of Time magazine. She never got a good look at the creature's face, but from what she did see, it was not like any animal she had seen. Martyr claims it looked a little like an orangutan, but different. Very, very broad shoulders. So that the small, the head was very small in relation to the, the breadth of the shoulder. Orangutans do live in Sumatra, and skeptics say it is most likely the animal eyewitnesses are really seeing. But Martyr disagrees. It was like seeing something from the wrong side of time. The word orangutan is derived from the Malay and Indonesian words meaning man of the forest. Adults stand between four and five and a half feet tall and have reddish hair. But there is a problem with the orangutan theory. Officially, orangutans have never been spotted in this part of Sumatra. New researchers have continued the hunt. 
Jeremy Holden is a professional wildlife photographer who has caught images of rare animals like the Sumatran tiger and Asian elephant. I photographed many, many species that have never been photographed before. Many, many things, probably something like 60 or 70 species now, including birds. Holden has teamed up with experienced tracker Adam Davies in this Monster Quest expedition. If ever you were sort of having a fantasy island moment and you wanted a monster to hide, I always thought this would just be the place. The team is deep within the epicenter of the sightings, in the remote Karinshi Seblok National Park. This park is where Debbie Marta saw the Orang Pendek and where locals continue to see the creature. Located two degrees south of the equator in the heart of the island of Sumatra, Karinshi Park covers almost 1.4 million hectares over four provinces and is located within the Bukit Barisan mountain range, one of the most remote rainforests in the world. The search destination is near Mount Karinshi, the tallest peak on the island rising to more than 12,000 feet above the Indian Ocean. It is also where in 2001, Adam Davies found what he believes is the footprint of the Orang Pendek. If you were to put that print next to all known species here, you, you would clearly see that there's a massive difference. The cast of the print reveals a strange anatomy, an opposable thumb similar to an orangutan, but with short, broad toes like a human. Davy sent a copy of the print cast to Dr. Jeff Meldrum for examination. These uh, pads are impressively stout, suggesting that maybe this is a, a different species altogether that has adaptations to walking on the ground. Davies also sent the cast to Dr. David Shivers, a university reader in primate biology and conservation at Selwyn College at the University of Cambridge, England. So these footprints were very exciting, very unusual because they were a mixed characters from all the different apes and humans. To Chivers, the most fascinating detail about the Orang Pendek is its ability to walk upright or bipedally. There is only one other primate in the world that walks like this, humans. They've got the toes that are shorter, more like human. The heel is like nothing in that it's curved. We call it banana foot, khaki pisang. The print of Davies cast in 2001 seems to support the Orang Pendek descriptions. The short broad toes would be better for walking bipedally rather than grasping limbs like the mostly tree-bound orangutan. However, skeptics say the print could be from a deformed or mutilated orangutan. Meldrum and Chivers say Davies must obtain corroborating evidence like similar prints, photographs or a body. This 10-day monster quest search reaches the shadow of the active volcano Mount Karinchi on the dormant slopes of Mount Gunung Tujur. It's a beautiful place, but I would not live here because there's earthquakes, two slap bang in the middle of two volcanoes. It'll all be gone in an instant, and I love it, but oh, give me the heebie-jeebies. With 10 porters and hundreds of pounds of equipment, it is a physically demanding hike up the slick and unstable muddy slope. 7,000 feet above sea level to the rim of the volcano. Going up the trail is a bit deceptive because you see light through the trees. You always feel like you're nearly over the lip. But I have to remind myself I'm actually only halfway up. The team knows that one misstep could compromise the expedition. We're at the top of the volcano's edge and we're going to descend now down the lip of the volcano actually to the lake. This is the bit that I've been waiting for because the views are just awesome. You won't have seen anything like it. It takes my breath away. I've been here four times and there's not a, there's not a week goes by when in my mind I don't think about how beautiful this place is. Located inside the volcano is the Gunung Tuja Lake. They must traverse the lake to the base camp, set up near many game trails, where there have been numerous Orang Pendek sightings. One of the guides for the expedition has seen the creature. Holden translates his story. Yes, yeah, so what he's saying, it, was, it wasn't much taller than a metre, but again, he's talking about this big, big body. It was covered in, in um, greyish, yellowish hair. It was walking on two legs, not four. When they saw it, 
it did this, put its arms up. Which is a, like a classic ape defense to make itself look much, much bigger. And I've heard this story many, many times from many, many people. And when it was walking there, again on two legs, but it was reaching for branches as it was, as it was traveling. The guide also found prints. Then he's saying that the, the gem pole, the thumb, is actually far back, jowl de blacan. So he's saying it's, it's far back on the, on the heel. It's not like with a human or a bear, where the, 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 the thumb is, is just part of the foot. This description is encouraging, as it seems to validate Davy's 2001 print. But there is more. He's saying, yeah, when we saw it, we were very, very surprised. Fear of the creature is a common theme among locals. They say this ape man is intelligent, able to remain undetected while watching them from the dark jungle. Davies and Holden are now just an hour away from their final destination. But first, they must traverse the deep lake the only way possible, in primitive dugout canoes called sampans. This is where we were camped with Debbie, this uh, head, headland here, when, we saw, when she saw the first Orin Pendek. The men and their equipment weigh the sampans deep into the water for their final push, into what the guides say is the land of the Orang Pendek. Southeast Asia may have a monster. The Orang Pendek is said to be a race of mystery apes that lurk deep in the jungle. More than 30 years before the discovery of a strange skull, a similar creature was seen by unlikely visitors, American GIs. I flew the Hueys. We had the uh, UH-1H models. Larry Wilson is a retired Army helicopter pilot. In July of 1970, Wilson was sent to Vietnam, assigned to the Air Cavalry. It was during a mission to replace a faulty communications device that Wilson saw something that even today he still can't explain. I would say November to December of 70 probably. It was kind of crazy. It was early in the morning. We took off real early because we knew we had to go out quite a ways. We. Uh, we're flying down a stream valley, kind of like, and uh, the stream made a U around this ridge line that came down and kind of pushed the stream out of the way. And rather than follow the stream around, we just hopped up over this ridge line. And as we were climbing up to get over this ridge line, ahead of us we could see this scraggly old tree. It must have been one that had been defoliated. You know, it looked like it was dead. And we saw the thing wiggling at first, and then we saw what it was that was wiggling. It was this like ape-like creature but it looked like a man. We thought at first it was a bad guy. We almost killed it. Wilson believes he startled the creature, but it didn't move and continued to shake the tree that it was in as Wilson moved the Huey in for a closer look. His face was kind of round, you know. He didn't have what I would call a human skull. Uh, it was more flat on top and, and, and almost like a, a soccer ball kind of shaped to the head, uh, but short hair. There was no tail. I mean, its facial features look very much like a man. 